heat to treat, to modify the microstructure as well as the properties of the metal. Okay, so we can choose any parameter, any processes, and every process, every parameter of the process will influence the final outcome. Okay, so this is going to influence the microstructure. as well as the properties, which is mechanical properties, because different microstructure will give different properties. Okay, so now we talk about the same um, TTT diagram or C curve, the same materials, the same steel, but now we want to change the microstructure into martensite. Why? Because we want to achieve the hard properties, okay? Matter cell formation is a diffusionless transformation, okay? Because it is very rapid process, the diffusion of uh, light atoms such as carbon inside the iron structure is uh, limited, okay? Uh, restrained because of very fast temperature changes, okay? The atomic motion occurs by cooperative homogeneous movement of many atoms that resulting in change in crystal structure, okay? So formation of muscle site in eutectal steel can be achieved through this area, okay? So if you want to enter this border, okay, you must ensure that the original muscle structure is austenite, which is gamma FCC, right? If you obtain this austenite, then only you can obtain any final marker structure, okay? So now you talk about martensite, okay? Forming from austenite to martensite. So if you conduct a very slow process, like a cooling process like this, meaning that you are crossing the first, the, the, this is how we call it zero transformation, the beginning of any transformation from austenite, and this line is 100% transformation. And the dotted line in the middle is 50%. So once you cooling, cool it slowly from austenite, definitely you will obtain coarse or fine perlite or in between. Okay, because it's passing through this line, passing through the 100% completion of transformation. So if you want to ensure that it's entered this line, okay, the MS line, you have to cool it down rapidly without crossing this. You cannot cross in this, uh, the first transformation line, okay? Because you have to ensure that at this point before you enter this line, before you enter this region, okay, it must be in the austenite microstructure. Okay, let's say this is the microstructure, the grain of austenite. It is solid state transformation, meaning that there is no liquid. No liquid, okay? It, it is not solidification. It, it is just, it is already solid. It is just a different phase, okay? From FCC into the uh, mutton structure. So you have to ensure that before you entering this line, uh, what line is it? Uh, the first line uh, border for the mutton start formation. So to uh, enter this temperature, which is, uh, I guess it is about, 210 or 215 degrees Celsius, okay? To, uh, uh, to reach in, enter this temperature, you have to ensure it is still astronaut. How? Because this is the indicator, meaning that you have to cool it very rapid, okay? Without um, delay, let's say at 500 degrees Celsius, uh, you reach 500 degrees Celsius after one second, so meaning that you are already crossed, maybe you, it is, uh, there is a tendency that you are crossing this line, this line, the 0% line, okay? So to do that, you just refer to this uh, diagram. This diagram already provided from the supplier, so you need to know how to use it, okay? So uh, yesterday, we talked about how they create this diagram, but today we learn how they, uh, you can use, you can utilize this diagram, okay? Each diagram different depending on the types of steel, okay? For this example, it is eutectal steel, okay? You cannot use this diagram if you're still containing 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%, 0.2%
carbon? No, definitely not. Because you won't obtain the same microstructure as well, uh, similar to the eutatal state. Okay, every uh, TTT diagram is unique for a uh, very specialized for a uh, specific type of state. Okay, so uh, then uh, by uh, cool it, cool it down uh, rapidly. Okay, cool it down rapidly. You can see that it's entering this region and complete at this line, meaning it is 100% mutton fat. Okay, so look at the time. It is second, meaning that you have to do it quickly, reaching the temperature 200 within a second. Okay, and completely 100%. Okay, uh, mutton fat uh, when reaching 100 degrees Celsius or below. Okay slightly below so uh, after that start transformation uh, at this point okay and then at this point uh, it is a uh, roughly 50 percent astronaut transformed into mountain side and these are the uh, 100 percent some of the diagram you may see is written as uh, 50 percent here but here is right it is uh, written as 98%, okay? Uh, it is just a different composition or maybe different um, uh, textbook, okay? The formation of mountain site in the steel, still, okay? Uh, there is a, uh, inside the retained austenite, we call it retained austenite, it is not really austenite. Uh, yeah, it retained austenite, where the carbon um, is a trap in the FCC uh, structure, uh, forming a BCT structure, it will look like a needle-like structure like this, okay? Uh, this is mountain side plates. Okay, it is very tiny. Uh, the ratio, uh, uh, the length ratio to the uh, volume, not volume, uh, the, over the diameter, okay? The aspect ratio between the length and the diameter is really high um, so that it will give a, a low strength, for the impact load at uh, transverse uh, direction, okay? Uh, right, this is the, the mountain side, uh, different mountain side at uh, uh, different temperature. If you quench to room temperature and if you uh, quench at a uh, very low temperature, it will give a different uh, mountain side formation, meaning that the uh, temperature of the quench medium will influence the mountain side formation. In this case, for the eutetal steel, if you greatly reduce uh, uh, the, the, the temperature changes, or uh, why this is this matter? Because um, this will influence uh, the, the uh, cooling rate. Okay. Uh, this, uh, for example, uh, astronaut temperature is 750. So to achieve this, it is about, uh, delta T is about seven to five only. But imagine this one, uh, uh, this one, uh, the de delta T equal to um, 850 degrees Celsius. So uh, over per second, this one is um, a higher cooling rate and uh, very rapid cooling and it will produce uh, greater uh, mountain sub formation, okay? So uh, we can control the post size, okay? Uh, parameter such as the quench media, um, cooling rate, of course, and then uh, the duration, the temperature, and everything, it will greatly improve the microstructure. And if the microstructure is changed, it's different, so you will pro uh, pro obtain different properties, okay? So of eutetal acetamol diagram, uh, it is a, a diagram that uh, uh, the same uh, C curve or TTT diagram or isothermal diagram, but a different carbon composition. And if you look at this diagram, you may see a different, okay, which is there are a pro eutectic microstructure. Okay, pro eutectic microstructure. Right. So, uh, uh, of course, if... Uh, if we quench at a higher temperature, 
we will achieve um, remember the Right, the first diagram of the steel, okay. This is first diagram of the, of the steel. Okay, this is alpha plus um, cementite. Okay, this is uh, arsenide. Okay, let's say you have a uh, 0.4%. Okay, for your detector, it is about 0.8% carbon. Okay, let's say we talk about 0.4, right? From arsenide temperature is here. Okay, this is arsenide temperature. And then you quench to the temperature. Let's say this is um, uh, 750. Okay, this the temperature is seven to seven or seven to three degrees Celsius. So let's say you quench from this temperature. What is it? Uh, maybe 800 degrees Celsius. You quench to 750. So meaning that you have transformed from arsenide into this phase which is the mixture between arsenide and alpha, ferrite alpha, ferrite. This is ferrite alpha. This is arsenide. So meaning that if you quench to this 750 degrees Celsius, you will obtain a transformation from arsenide into ferrite alpha. Okay. Uh, unlike you uh, steel, which is 0.8%, okay you quench to the temperature below that this temperature you will obtain perlite which is a lamella structure of alpha slash cementite okay so now we talk about off eutectal meaning that uh, you are going to have a pro eutectal microstructure such as a uh, hypo eutectal or hypo eutectal so uh, in this case you will have a different microstructure if you quench at uh, 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 if you have different uh, composition so uh, if you want to tailor the properties you must know what is the properties for each phases okay so if you obtain um, if you want to obtain um, how to say this um, maybe it's not practical but it can be done theoretically it can be done okay let's say you want to have this microstructure which is um, alpha this alpha look at this all right so let's say you have this temperature from 800 you quench to uh this one let's say from Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's say you choose um quench to this temperature. And then you hold at this temperature around 700 or 650 until uh, milli mn mn apa? about uh, 50 seconds. Fifty second, okay. This time, uh, time. Fifty second. You hold until this, and then you quench the room temperature okay can you guess what is the phases of your final microstructure final microstructure what is it can you guess what is the final microstructure gamma plus alpha gamma plus alpha Alpha, all right, gamma plus alpha. Okay, so let's think. If we refer back to the phase diagram, okay, 
this is gamma. This is alpha plus gamma. This is alpha plus cementite. And this is gamma plus cementite. Okay. Right. What temperature is this? 7 to 7 degrees Celsius. So now you quench to the room temperature. How can you obtain gamma? So maybe you uh, may ask, what gamma do here? Isn't it? Okay. So gamma is, yes, but we don't call really gamma. We call it retain austenite. Okay. Retain austenite. But the mass microstructure form, if you change austenite to the room temperature, you let austenite reduce rapidly to the room temperature. Okay. What happened is gamma will transform into martensite. Okay. And the formation of martensite, it is not the whole structure of your microstructure is martensite. Okay. Martensite, remember, uh, previously uh, I've shown this microstructure. Okay. This one. Okay. You can say, oh, my microstructure having martensite. But actually, actually inside the martensite, there are at the background here, it's surrounded by gamma. Okay. But uh, austenite, uh, we call this austenite as a uh, retained austenite. Okay, austenite. But when we discuss about the final microstructure, basically we don't say that, oh, I got retained austenite. No, basically we highlight the formation of martensite because whatever is this, there's no 100% martensite. There must be a portion of retained austenite here. So we still call this is our final microstructure containing uh, uh, containing martensite. So when we talk about uh, this process, okay, when you let it cool uh, rapidly after 50 seconds of soaking at this temperature, which is 690 degrees Celsius, okay, you let it uh, uh, holding at this temperature for 50 seconds and then you quench. So meaning that there are some portion of austenite. Only maybe 20% or 30% is ferrite. Okay, what happened to the rest? 80%. As the percent rapidly quench to room temperature, meaning that the austenite, the 80% austenite here will transform into 80% of mutton side. So you want you 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 can uh, modify and you can uh, customize this. Okay, you know uh, the the uh, ferrite is soft and mutton side is hard. Okay, if you obtain 20% of um, softness and you measure the hardness, you measure, measure, measure the tensile strength, you measure all the properties, you think that, oh, there's some, uh, there are room for improvement. I want to increase the strength a, a, a bit. So for that, you can increase this, okay, to 30% maybe. So how much it will influence? And then you as an engineer, basically, you are required to provide this data. Okay, you test it several times and provide the database and later on when the uh, supervisor to give the uh, instruction to the lab, uh, whatever the low level uh, worker, they just apply it. Okay, whatever the numbers that you have recorded. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the, the task that uh, the responsibility of the engineer when they work with the uh, process. Okay, so uh, the application. Okay. Temporary. This is a process that basically uh, traditionally people uh, do when they want to make um, uh, uh, tools, okay? Cutting tools or whatsoever, right? Like a knife, a hammer, okay? A hammer, whatever is this? Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, benda yang tajam kan? Uh, the, the tools that for cutting, uh, yeah, if you want to cut something, uh, the tools must be very hard, okay? Because it need to maintain the sharpness of the uh, cutting area, okay? So the knife, for example, okay? The blade must be very sharp enough, okay? To obtain the sharp, uh, to maintain the sharpness, uh, the hardness properties is required because it, it, it don't change plastically upon impact lock, okay? Maksudnya dia tak, dia tak, dia tak mudah tumpul lah bila kita bagi impact load 
dia tak berubah bentuk sharpness dia. Okay. Let's say this is the knife. Okay. The sharpness at this blade. Alright. So it must maintain a certain degree of hardness. Okay. So that it won't easily deform plastically. Okay. So um, tempering with quench. Okay. Uh, during the tempering, what happened is, okay, so now we have this um, C-curve diagram or isothermal diagram. So uh, when we talk about um, um, quenching process, okay, it is very rapid. What happened is there are a different degree of uh, cooling rate, okay? For example, if you have this kind of cylindrical shape of component, any engineering component, you conduct the quenching process, okay, what happened is outside, only at the outside will experience very rapid cooling. Meanwhile, at the inside, it is slightly slower cooling, okay. So, uh, we can translate into this diagram. This is outside, okay. This is inside. So, inside is slightly delayed, okay. It reached the temperature of MS or the starting of uh, mutton sub formation slightly later than the outside because outside is the first point reach room temperature, okay? So outside region is the first point that reach the temperature 200 degrees Celsius, which is the MS temperature, okay? Meanwhile, the inside, of course, the diffusion uh, of the heat is uh, travel through the mass, okay? So inside is still hot and it takes some time to release the heat from the inside, okay? So it is uh, a bit slower, okay? You need to control to ensure that inside will experience mutton sub formation completely, all right? So um, to do that, to have to ensure that inside also does not crossing this zero percent or the beginning uh, uh, transformation formation okay that's number issue number one issue number two there are different uh, cooling rate okay so different cooling rates what happen is um, it is easily uh, cause okay the, the different rate between outside and inside will easily cause uh, cracking okay so uh, this is what normal uh, quenching and tempering process, okay? After we cool it down and then uh, this is complete of uh, quenching process. Process number one is, is quenching and then we reheat for the uh, tempering process, okay? Tempering process, this is tempering process. We reheat and hold it at some time and then slowly cool, okay? Or even uh, rapidly cool, it does not um, uh, affect so much, okay? So uh, that, this one is conventional, okay? Um, conventional quenching plus tempering process. So there's another um, improved process. We call it mar tempering process, okay? Mar tempering process. How? Okay, mar tempering is actually a modified steel quenching procedure to minimize distortion and cracking that may develop during uneven cooling of the heat treated materials. Yeah, this is uneven at the outside and at the inside, okay, during the first quenching process. So, mal tempering, what is the purpose? The purpose to solve the problem, the uneven cooling rate between the surface and the inside materials, okay, upon cooling, upon quenching process, okay. So, how do people do this, okay? Right, this is the quenching at the temperature just before the mutton side formation. We don't want mutton side form at uneven uh, transformation time. Okay, so now we know that there is a curve like this. So we can utilize this unique shape of the 0% transformation line. Okay, how? Okay, we quench just before this temperature. Okay, let's say we take 250 or 230 degrees Celsius. 
250 degrees Celsius. For example, like this example, okay, we hold this temperature, okay, uh, 200 degrees Celsius, 250 degrees Celsius consider uh, still high, not this one, okay, 250 degrees Celsius still high, and uh, the market structure still awesome, okay, we hold it for some time, and then just before we enter in this region, we quench it to the room temperature. So uh, by modifying this process, we're still allowing the transformation from austenite to martensite. We still get martensite, okay? Similar to the conventional quenching and tempering process, okay? So we got martensite, the martensite is still the same. You still need to have a um, uh, tempering process, okay? To temper the uh, weak or brittle martensite. Yeah, you do the tempering process as normal, and then you get better uh, tempered mutton side. Okay, we call it mar tempering. What is the what is the difference? The difference is only this. Okay, uh, just a small modification, but with the knowledge, the engineer come up with the solution. Just having this holding time before the beginning of mutton side formation. Okay, do you understand? Yes. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, there's another type of tempering process. We call it house tempering. Okay. Uh, earlier, we talked about quenching, conventional quenching plus uh, tempering. And then number two, mild tempering. Okay. Which is... Uh, just modif slightly modify the process of conventional quenching and tempering. And then next is house tempering. Okay, house tempering is an isothermal heat treatment that produces a binite structure. Actually, it's not mutton side, it is binite. This heat treatment process provides steel with better toughness and ductility. Okay, so uh, it is just a normal heat treatment process, which is uh, you quench at a uh, certain temperature to for what? Just to obtain the lower binite. Just want to obtain lower binite. But the temperature just like the above the, 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 the beginning of mutton sub formation. Okay. Not uh, 300, not 350. Okay. Uh, 350, you still obtain lower binite. But this one, it is uh, slightly lower. Okay. The final microstructure is lower binite. Okay. The effect is similar to the tempering. Okay, as, uh, as tempering is an isothermal treatment that produces a binary structure. This is a treatment process provided, provides steel with better toughness and ductility. The keyword is toughness. Okay, toughness and ductility. Uh, okay, uh, the key, uh, another important point for our tempering is um, basically, um, I, I think all all small, small components such as the screw, bolts, they use this heat treatment process. Why? Why screw, nuts, bolts using this process? Okay, basically, uh, the, the, the point is small component. Small component, basically, they utilize this, uh, this uh, house tempering process. So why screw, nuts, and bolts require this kind of process uh, where is this done okay where is this done uh, what what makes you say that uh, sebab dia nak pakai lama uh, nak dengan bolt tu okay yeah Nuts and bolts ni memang sudah pakai lama sebab dia joining. It is a joining between two components. If it is uh, easily corroded, easily wear off, easily broken, so the the structure needs uh, means the structure will collapse. Okay. So um, and another things at the joining is a the most um, yeah is a is a region where experience stress concentration, isn't it? So some uh, static load or dynamic load or accidental loads uh, will focus at joining, 
okay, where there is a school, nuts and bolts, okay. So the toughness, okay, other than wear resistance, toughness is the most important, okay, because it's a uh, that's the most critical part, okay. If you have, uh, for example, joining at the bridges, okay, at the bridge, there's uh, some metal, uh, there are several metal parts, it's being joined by the screw bolts and whatever the fastening method, okay. So, uh, imagine there is an accident on the bridge, okay, uh, there's some impact load happen on the structure. So, the screw nuts and bolts is really critical at that time. So if they are brittle, they are soft, meaning that they cannot support the structure. So that's the reason this small component using our temporary. Another thing, it is because they are small. Okay, if the bolt screw and nut is large, maybe our tempering is not practical. Why? Because because of the structure is small, whatever the effects that um, experience from the temperature, outside temperature to the 300 or 200 something temperature they experience okay like a, a real quenching process okay like a, a mountain sub formation because of very large temperature uh, difference okay and the small component has a, a small volume okay so uh, and then it will uh, utilize this kind of uh, out tempering process Okay, so uh, in summary, isothermal transformation diagram make possible the prediction of microstructure. See, you just uh, need to know there is a diagram, okay, which call isothermal transformation diagram, where we can we can uh, modify the microstructure of your product, okay, by just following whatever heat treatment method that. Uh, uh, suitable for your co uh, component. Okay, uh, metal synthetic steel are the hardest and stronger, yet most brittle. Okay, so it is always associated uh, between um, hard and brittle. Okay, imagine when we talk about hard, imagine uh, like a brick, glass, glass can. It is very hard, but they are very brittle. Tempered metal side is very strong but relatively ductile to the mutton side, okay? And binite has desirable strength ductile. Binite is uh, in between, between the mutton side or tempered mutton side and the ferrite or perlite, okay? So that's the reason uh, it is not as strong as tempered mutton side, okay? Fine perlite is harder and stronger and more brittle than coarse perlite. Okay, yesterday we talked about the coarse and fine perlite. Okay, they are all perlite. Remember perlite having the lamella structure like this one and the fine perlite having a fine microstructure like this. But still inside the microstructure, the faces is perlite. Okay, it's more perlite lah. Okay, so a uh, fine microstructure is stronger finer stronger okay because of the grain boundary okay always remember this okay at this point you can utilize uh, the benefit of grain size okay without changing the uh, types of alloy meaning that let's say in your company your boss asks you to improve the strength they don't want to spend uh, uh, money on changing the material. If you change the material, raw material, meaning that you need to change the supplier, you need to do the investigation to verify whether the supplier is correct or not. Many things to uh, need to be considered. But now the objective just to improve the mechanical properties, just to improve the strength. So meaning that you can tailor the grain size. Oh, sorry, the grain size. Just conduct the heat treatment process and change the grain size. Or if you want to improve the ductility, again, you can increase the grain size okay so that it will be more ductile more softer less hardness okay something like that okay one benefit of month tempering is that it reduce the cracking okay why because inside and outside uh component during the quenching will experience different cooling rate okay it that may cause the thermal stresses okay and of course residual stresses due to the varying geometry 
As tempering is a hardening process for metal which uses desirable mechanical properties such as high toughness and ductility. Okay. All right. I think that's all for this slide. Before we continue uh, another slide, um, okay. Uh, let's take a break for 10 minutes and come back later at uh, uh, 2 o'clock, uh, 15 minutes. Lah. 3 jam, 3, 3 jam. Uh, pukul 3. All right, uh, can we continue at 3 o'clock? Can, yeah, Doctor. Okay. All right, uh, yeah, stay, stay je kat situ. Kalau you nak minum-minum pun boleh. Tapi jangan lari eh. Okay. All right, uh, see you again in 15 minutes. Okay, kalau ada apa-apa nak tanya, boleh tanya. Saya ada kat sini. Yes, right. Um, I'm going to um, brief, give a brief on the assignment. Okay. CMM 2613 and material science, the group assignment. All right. Um, this is the instruction. Uh, actually, um, you are going to again train yourself on um, how to get a correct information because uh, I'm quite surprised because uh, according to the last assignment given to you, which is short assignment three as well as the test one, it is um it is a uh, I think um it is a good training for you to really understand um how to judge the information that you receive. Okay. Um, the thing is, uh, for example, uh, in the test question, okay. The question asks you to find uh, uh, the metal that having uh, interstitial uh, uh, structure or diffusion and another uh, alloy. Another one is substitutional. Okay, uh, but still I found uh, most of the interstitial, especially it is a uh, most of them are not really uh, an alloy or metal materials. Okay. Uh, because if I try to Google uh, those information, I can easily obtain the information. Uh, so uh, the, now I realize that uh, you need to uh, practice until you as get a, a very uh, useful experience, okay, uh, in learning. Um, I think this is the skill for uh, lifelong learning, okay. So uh, if I'm the time. So never mind. Uh, you need to do more so that uh, you you experience in this uh, practice. Okay. So uh, for the group assignment, it is slightly different uh, from the short assignment and the test because uh, it it it's, uh, train you to work in a group. Okay. So um, uh, the objective of this uh, this uh, group assignment is to increase student ability to understand uh, materials and uh, the science behind it. And then uh, number two, to train the student for lifelong learning by searching relevant information related to materials from various sources. So when we talk about sources, um, last time... Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, eh, sorry. Uh, yes, tak nampak. Memang saya terlupa. Okay. So, sekarang saya share. Okay. So, uh, this is the assignment. Okay, ni minggu depan je lah. Ni uh, objective. Alright. So, uh, number two, to train the student for lifelong learning by searching relevant information related to materials from uh, various sources. Okay. So, uh, uh, when we refer to any uh, engineering knowledge or science knowledge, uh, we need to know uh, what is the, 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 the actual sources. Okay. So, for example, if you um, read the news or read any information, sometimes, uh, for example, like uh, like a rumor, something like that, or any um, uh, 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 what we call it, uh, uh, any whatever news from the okay. So, um, sometimes you might think that oh, because of the publisher, you think it is not a uh, uh, 
it not it, it is it maybe the the sources is not really uh, uh, strong enough to uh, support uh, the reliability of the information. So uh, same goes to the acad academic uh, uh, research uh, uh, research uh, perspective. Okay, when we find the information, for example, about uh, the alloy, the compound. Okay, uh, if you search uh, randomly from the internet, and uh, if the publisher is a a very good society of uh, any science uh, area. For example, uh, in materials, there is a various um, material society. Okay, uh, that sources may be a very reliable, high reliability. Okay, if it is coming from any um, what we call it, um, any um, um, profit making uh, agency. For example, if they sell aluminium, they may highlight only a good side of the aluminium, for example, only the good side of their product. Okay, that one is uh, less uh, uh, less uh, reliability in terms of the information. Okay, so uh, you need to uh, get experience. Okay, get experience, and then from that, it will uh, fasten up your process to uh, making a report or answering uh, or do any uh, solving. Uh, any engineering problem. So um, point number two is really cr critical for this group assignment. Okay, number three, to train the student to present their work related to the characterization and method of improving the materials. Okay, there's a new element here about how we can improve the materials property. Okay, in the previous chapter, we talked about strengthening mechanism, we talked about a uh, heat treatment process. Those are the processes to improve the mechanical properties. Why? Because I want you to know that the microstructure, whatever the microstructure that we obtain through the process of the improvement, it will really affect the mechanical properties. That's very important point. As a mechanical engineer, you should be able to have this kind of knowledge. Okay, so um, the deadline I put here, uh, 2nd of July, uh, it depends on the situation. Uh, uh, before that, may I know uh, anybody are still in the campus right now? Anyone? No? Okay, I assume there's uh, none of my students are in the campus right now. So if you are in the campus, I think you can finish up this uh, quite fast because uh, you can easily access the, um, the, the library, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, online access uh, without using the third party uh, uh, VPN access. Okay, so uh, for this, uh, what you have to do is you need to prepare a PowerPoint slide uh, to, uh, to uh, just like a presentation, okay? But your presentation will be recorded in the video. So you need to submit two files. One is the PowerPoint slide and number two is the video itself, all right? Um, and then you have to submit through the e-learning, okay? under the, uh, the, the folder name group assignment. I haven't yet created this one, okay? But uh, I will do uh, the deadline is 2nd of July. So what uh, need to be in the, in the, in the uh, report is the introduction of the material, okay? I will give you the names of uh, materials that you need to uh, study, okay? In uh, introduction, basically, we introduce about the material. For example, if it is copper zinc, which is a brass, you introduce what is the brass, what is the elements constitute, uh, what is the mechanical properties, uh, car um, chemical properties, and many other uh, characteristics. And then no, point number two is the content on the first diagram of that particular alloy. For example, in the plumbum standard alloy, okay, you need to explain uh, how the phase changes, okay, how the phase change and uh, how we can determine a specific phases, uh, all these criteria need to be present in your uh, report, okay? This is example. For example, uh, you have plumber standard. What is plumber standard? Plumber standard is basically a soldering material that we use in almost all uh, electronic packaging, okay? If you want to connect to one um, uh, terminal to another terminal, one component to another component, we are going to use standard based materials and plumber maybe nowadays uh, they eliminate try to reduce the use of plumber 
but uh, the well established the most popular long time ago is plumber senum so the application is very wide the various uh, composition of uh, plumber senum uh, is uh, widely used in the industry so uh, it is uh, this is the type of uh, face diagram for plumber senum okay there are different category of the alloy one is uh, is a uh, hypo eutectic alloy where is hypo eutectic alloy it is here okay hypo eutectic and this is eutectic alloy okay within this regions meaning that uh, below this uh, horizontal line between this to this it is hypo hypo uh, eutectic and between this region to this region it is hypo eutectic so there are several types of phase transformation you can discuss on this you can discuss on this you can discuss on the at this one also you can discuss uh, at the UTT, you can discuss at the hyper you can discuss uh, uh, at, the, at the region where involved the transformation into single phase of beta phase okay all right uh, so this is uh, the, the content need to be there when you discuss about the phase diagram okay uh, and then the third point need to be uh, present in your uh, report is the method to improve the material properties okay you can list down the method must be relevant not just a random improvement no i don't want that okay um must be relevant to your uh, alloy for example like this plumber standard okay uh, there's uh, so many problems you highlight the problem okay for example we want to um, eliminate plumber you can replace with copper okay you can search information not just guessing a process it must be a, a established reported process okay from the uh, reliable uh, sources okay a trusted sources you're not just guessing oh it can be combined with copper uh, to replace plumber no no not like that okay uh, other than that maybe improves in terms of the hardness okay by uh, instead of only stannum plus plumber maybe we can add more such as silver why we add silver highlight it maybe to improve the mechanical property maybe to improve the material stability upon the aging process there's so many you need to search from the reliable source. okay you cannot do it last minute because you won't be able to find it because you never train your search engine okay if you do it last minute your search engine such as google or whatsoever they don't well train enough okay because why because they never search for this kind of information they don't know which one is uh you spend more time on that particular uh, content so that they are not smart enough okay so meaning that you cannot do it last minute you can start from now and then uh, uh one day maybe uh 20 minutes or 30 minutes spend for searching information later after one month after four weeks three weeks maybe uh your computer is uh, be uh, will become smart enough okay and then uh you conclude based on the information relates from point one until point three uh what is the, the the conclusion and then references this is very important i want to know what kind of reference that you refer to and then the attachment if it is relevant okay if it is not relevant you can just omit this one okay the rubrics okay special peer review evaluation peer evaluation Okay, I will uh, provide a Google form. Uh, each of you need to evaluate your friends, your group member. I will assign a group member for you. Um, uh, you need work for it. Uh, you cannot choose your friends, okay? Because this is the real world happen nowadays. Uh, it is randomly, uh, like uh, during the pandemic now, uh, you never see your, fr uh, your uh, friend's face, okay? But you need to work with them. So please, okay? Uh, and then, um, it's only 45% on the content, okay? But the rest in, in your, your attitude, okay? Uh, this is your attitude, okay? This is also the uh, other skill, which is reporting and then presenting, okay? These are communication skill, right? These are the integrity or ethical, ethic. Okay, jangan main-main eh. Hantar lambat, memang kena tenyeh lah dengan bos eh. Okay, content. 45 percent it's a good yes okay so this is our the rubrics i'm going to evaluate based on this one and this is a contribution marks from you okay those uh this is 100 but for your uh, total mark is only 10 percent 
Okay. Um, uh, okay lah. Uh, sebulan punya kerja kan. Alright. The project title. Uh, project. Uh, there are. Um, there are 11 title. Okay. This kind of uh, alloy is uh, assigned for each group. This is group 1 until group 11. And then. Oh. Okay. Mana this one. Alright. The list name. The list name. I'm going to show with you. The list name of. Sorry, eh? Kejap, eh? Okay. Uh, I'm going to upload this in the e-learning. Don't worry. Okay, so these are the group uh, group names. Okay, uh, your your group member, group number one. Okay, group number one. You need to identify your friends. Okay, Aaron, Etiarudin, Alvin, Pongchu. Okay, semua ada. Eh? All right. So group number two, Hakim, Pridoy, Jacob, Johnny. Group number three. Show Wei, Sahmu, Jing Yang, Hazibut. Okay. Group number four. Mahbubur Rahman, Nusrat Alam, Muhammad Zuhi Akmal, Zulfadi. Group number five. Muhammad Amar Shahmi, Muhammad Faiz, Muhammad Nizam and Muhammad Zuhemi. Group number six. Ong Seng Chi, Prada Narta. Ranga Ramadhani Taruna, Tai Yo Wen, okay, Abdul uh, Group Number Seven, Abdul Rahman, Ahmad Kamil, Amirul Hazim, Indo Zaris Shohada. Indo Indo ada di sini? Ada dok tuh. Okay good. So itu uh, uh, kawan kawan awak eh. Uh, lain program tapi uh, okay. Uh, baguslah you mix dengan program lain. Alright, uh, group number eight, Karim Esam, Mustafa Muhammad, Muhammad Amirul Iman dan Muhammad bin Hazman. Group number nine, Muhammad Faik Idlan, Muhammad Fikri, Muhammad Fidaus dan Muhammad Ifat. Group number ten, Muhammad Rezwan, uh, Nur Iqbal Putra, Nur Fatinatul Aisyah, Nur Adriana, Adri, Ardini. Okay, dan selebihnya group 11, Umar Kayum, Muhammad Akid, Yusuf Amir Mustafa, Anas Farhan dan Muhammad Zahir Fitri. Okay, semua-semua ni ada ke? Alright, I'm going to upload this in the e-learning. I'm going to share it with you in the uh, WhatsApp group also. So, uh, okay, uh, the title uh, is actually uh, uh, the alloy name. Okay, okay. Uh, this is, I just randomly select based on my experience of working with these materials, okay? But if you think there's so much burden for you, you are unable to understand what is the application, so difficult, and you want to change to another application, uh, for example, you want to change it into um, medicine titanium, for example, because you think uh, the application is so, uh, what we call it, uh, it's so, so changi lah, okay? So uh, amazing, very brand new application, very smart for the robotic, for the sensor, for example. You think that one is uh, most interesting to be studied? You can propose in the WhatsApp group, okay? So that uh, the rest of the uh, uh, student in the class know that and if they have the same intention, they can uh, avoid that kind of particular uh, alloy, okay? This is just the name of alloy that I think there are some application of it. And if you think you have better idea, you can propose and you must discuss among your group member. Okay. So uh, I think uh, that's all for the assignments. Uh, any question?
Ah, uh, doktor, presentation dalam bentuk slide kan? Ah, dalam bentuk video. Slide, uh, slide dan video. Maksudnya slide kita, tu nak buat video. Kita present lah slide tu maksudnya. Ah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, betul. Ah, uh, ada minimum berapa page ke berapa? Dah, tak ada, tak ada. Tak ada minimum. Tak ada minimum. Okay lah. Uh, sebab uh, the method, uh, I think the best method if you unable to upload because the the the, the movie file is too large, uh, you can just share the link of uh, the YouTube. Let's say you upload to the YouTube and make sure you or you can share in the Google Drive the link uh, to me uh, and I need to keep the video in the Google Drive so that it will be stored permanently. Okay. So I assume that my uh, uh, Google Drive account is uh, will be permanent until I die or until I retire so that I need to have that video if you upload to the youtube you just share the link and i will download it and store it in my uh, drive so uh, don't worry about the size of the video okay tapi jangan sampai 100 giga kan macam kagum menang saya tengok okay all right so uh the presentation last time is like that okay you can uh you can act properly during presentation you don't have to worry about uh spontaneous but uh, i think uh, it shouldn't be a problem all right but make sure your voice do not using siri or whatever the narrator application okay jangan guna suara robot okay use your own voice this is the, the chance to show how how nice your voice is okay ada lain tak soalan is there any other question tadi eh kalau tadi kita sambung kita punya kuliah al kuliah kita ada lagi 20 minutes about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, continuous schooling transformation diagram. Okay, it is about, uh, it is not much uh, different with the TT diagram. Okay. So, uh, in this case, uh, the outcome from this topic is to understand the hardenability of the steam. And uh, what is hardenability? I think you have uh, you have some uh, experience in the lab, right? Uh, where one of the lab module is uh, a uh, Germany and quench test, which is uh, the test on the hardenability. Okay, so uh, I think it, it is uh, the theory is now, okay, uh, which is uh, the hardenability. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand how and why Germany and quench test is performed. Okay, able to use CCT diagram, CCT diagram to predict phase transformation during continuous cooling heat treatment. Okay, what is this? Okay. See, from austenite phase, Meramela to austenite. Quenching, okay. Uh,
and sir, we can hear you. This is the quenching process. How they run the quenching process. Eh, alamak. Boleh nampak ke video ni? Nampak, nampak. Ah, okay. So, tadi saya takut sebab saya share video ni, dia jadi macam ni. Dia, dia terus tak boleh display. Okay, ni satu lagi. Ah, macam tu lah rupa dia. Dia buat heat treatment. This is the heat treatment process. Okay, uh, this is fine. This is the uh, distance. The temperature reduction at one time. Okay, for example, after quenching, you quench at the, in the water. Okay, uh, this area, this area already reached room temperature. But at the center, this region, exactly at this point, uh, I mean that from this body, exactly at the center, it's still high temperature. Temperature may be uh, 200, 300, something like that. Okay, it's very, very high temperature. But this one is already... Uh, Doctor, already slightly long. Oh, slightly long, not. Okay, slightly long. Uh, suara boleh dengar eh? Boleh. Okay. okay, sekarang nampak tak slide? Tak nampak eh? Nampak, nampak. Okay, nampak eh? Alright, uh, so uh, what, uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, if we do quenching, uh, the surface, this is surface, we we'll coat it first. And then this is center, uh, the core region, okay? It's still at high temperature, the moment you immerse in the water, okay? So, um, uh, in a continuous cooling uh, heat treatment, still is undergoing a continuous cooling as opposed to an abrupt rapid quench, okay? So, the transformation from arsenide to collect occur over a range of temperature rather than a single isothermal temperature. So CCT diagram is used to represent which type of phase changes will occur in the material as, as uh, it cools at the different rates. Um, so, CCT meaning that uh, it is uh, just like a, a uh, isothermal CTT diagram, but for the CCT, okay, you don't uh, quench at specific temperature, okay, you just quench at normal temperature, and then um, uh, you will obtain uh, a similar phases like uh, the, for example, um, like this, uh, okay, CCT, uh, CCT diagram, CTT diagram is like this, okay. Like this, you can obtain a uh, phase like a uh, polite, binite, and microsite. But CCT diagram is only a continuous uh, cooling process where uh, it's covered this region only. Okay, this region only. So, meaning that if you cool it without quenching, you cool it 
uh, normal cooling uh, cooling rate in the air or in the furnace, uh, you can get both for uh, light, core uh, for light and fan for light. Okay, so uh, okay, uh, imagine this is TTT diagram. Okay, so why you need to quench to this temperature and hold at this temperature just to obtain uh, fine for light or core for light, light, whereas you can obtain it by continuous cooling process. Okay, the continuous cooling, cooling process, this is the beginning. Uh, without quenching at this high temperature, for example, 650 degrees Celsius. Okay, no, you don't need to. Just continuous cooling, you can obtain uh, fine for light or coarse for light. Okay. And then uh, the next. The next thing is hardenability. Okay, the hardenability of metal alloy is uh, the depth of uh, to which a material is hardened after uh, putting it through a heat treatment process. Okay, uh, it is not a hardness. It is the uh, ability of material to be hardened. Okay, do not confuse with hardness. Okay, basically, if you want to uh, investigate this property, which is the hardenability properties, not hardness. Okay, we want to identify the hardenability. Okay, we will conduct a uh, uh, Germany and quench test. Okay, the Germany and quench test. If you conduct uh, in the lab, material science lab, we have learned this. Okay, you have this from the Austin night. You uh, rapidly quench starting from this point, and then you grind the surface so that it will become flat surface. And then you conduct the hardness test. Okay, to uh, to investigate these properties, hardness testing is required. Okay, hardness properties is an indicator or the measuring tool to determine the hardenability. So if you uh, conduct the hardness test, uh, you uh, if you remember uh, the, for the chapter five. Uh, Mechanical properties. There is a, a topic on hardness testing. Okay, viscous hardness or rockwell hardness or whatever test, test testing. Okay, for example, if the uh, if the uh, viscous hardness using the diamond indenter, you indent on this flat surface and you may see the various size of indenter. Okay, the larger the surface uh, being indented, so this is the size that you measure. The larger the D size, okay, the softer material, more data. This is hard because very small, tiny indentation that can be done. Okay, very tiny surface being indented. Okay, of course, there is a plastic deformation occur. That's the reason you can see the shape of indented, the cocaine. Okay, the bila dia melekuk dalam tu, size lekukan tu menjadi indikator untuk how soft or how hard the surface. So if you see this kind of variant size, so meaning that this one is hard, this one is soft. Okay, this one will cool first, cool rapid. This one is will be cool slowly. Okay, slowly. So that's the reason it will become large indenter size. This is small in that size because it is hard. Okay, so um, so the Germany uh, uh, test involved here. Okay, blah blah blah. You can read it. Of course, you need to heat it up to afternoon and then quench at the room temperature only at the end of the uh, materials. Okay, you insert the steel and then you open up the uh, water. Nampak tak video ni? Okay, good. So, nampak.
Okay, sorry eh. Bila dia play video tu, dia jadi macam tu. Okay. Alright. Uh, nampak tak slide ni? Nampak tak? Nampak. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so, a cooling rate uh, at the end of the uh, quench test will be cooled very fast. And uh, this is the flattened surface on the specimen. Uh, the water will be uh, injected at, at this uh, end. So, this will be, a, uh, it will cool at, uh, if we uh, model the time here, this is number one and this is the last one. Okay, this is the first. Okay, first point where uh, reaching a room temperature. Okay, so we take a several point from this to this uh, distance. Okay, after uh, the 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 farther away from the quench end, uh, the higher the. Okay, so uh, the meaning of this sentence, if the hardness. Hardness, high hardness. Let's say um, this is hardness. Um, let's put this as a two hundred hardness because the value at this point, okay. And if this value can be maintained up until uh, the distance farther from this end, let's say maybe it is a uh, around one nine six uh, uh, because hardness. Uh, so meaning that the higher the harder will be. If if the result shows that here is 200 and here is 50, okay, so meaning that this one is low hardenability. Okay, so this one is high hardenability. Uh, Dr. Kamita, we have a slide. Oh, tak boleh nampak tu. Okay, sekali lagi saya share. Okay, nampak tak ni? Slide saya. Slide. Nampak, nampak tak? Nampak. Okay. Right, uh, saya cita balik lah eh. Okay, uh, so uh, from this point to this point, if you can maintain the hardness, this is what meant by this sentence. Okay, for example, the hardness rate, uh, you test the, this, this point is uh, the indentation test. So many points, okay. You can maintain the value, for example, this is 200 uh, because hardness and this is about, uh, let's say, 190 uh, hardness value. So meaning that it is almost about the same. Uh, meaning that this material is having high uh, high hardenability okay but if the value here is 200 and here is 50 hardness because value so meaning that for this alloy it is low hardenability because why hardness value hard property is coming from the molten side. Okay, from the molten side. So you can assume at this point is having lots of molten side. For this material, even though it's cool at the same time, okay, maybe at the same time, okay, need temperate time uh, equal to uh, zero second, time equal to uh, 50 second. Uh, this one also zero second, this one also 50 second. But this alloy, alloy, ah, uh, jangan confuse lah. Alloy one, alloy two. So alloy two, okay. Even though uh, this point is experienced fifty second of cooling process, but it is able to form molten side. So that's the reason it have very high hardness. Even though the distance is farther from the end quench, okay. So 
this material is considered as high hardenability. It can be hardened even though the cooling rate is slow, right? Why? Okay, number one, because of the alloy content. Number two is uh, because of the size of the material and many others. Effect. So high hardenability means that it is able to form uh, a complete high hardness, even though the distance from the, um, uh, the, the, the time uh, to cool it down to room temperature is long from the point, this point, and quench point. Okay. So, uh, if the distance at the far from the uh, quench end is lower, so means that this is low hardenability. Okay, uh, uh, the metal side form at the uh, end, and this one is very polite formation. Okay, uh, the continuous uh, cooling rate is forming from uh, from the quench end test. Okay, so uh, we conduct. Uh, this a distance from quench hardness. It's a difference between these two. All right. Every point from the distance zero and the distance far until eighty mm will experience different cooling rate okay the uh, cooling curve we call it cooling curve will different at every point okay at the distance zero which is a it will experience quenching process okay quenching process all right so for the quenching process of course you will obtain 100 percent metal side okay and then for the point B, somewhere here, okay, somewhere here. So point B, there are slightly less pattern sub formation. Why? Because it's already go to this point. Okay, uh, when it's crossing this line, when it's crossing this line, what happened is, there is the beginning of phase transformation. Okay, there is some percentage. Okay, the formation into perlite. Okay, the beginning of perlite formation. So what happened is it contain okay some amount of perlite. They call it modular perlite. And what about the rest? The rest will experience quenching, forming side. Okay, and then at the distance farther from the quench end okay will uh, become more slow cooling rate okay so it will completely transform into fine for light okay fine for light 100 percent there's no button side why no button side because it is crossing this line what line is it it is 100 percent transformation okay this is the begins this is the end, meaning that it is 100% transformation. Okay, so you end here. So this region is fine per light. Okay, what about D? For D, for D, it begin here, it's ended here. Okay, if you divide this region, it is almost reaching the upper region of the perlite. So this one is coarse perlite. Coarse perlite. Okay, so because of the marker structure, different, so the properties are different. Button side is hardest. Button side plus a, a small amount of uh, perlite will be less hard and then fun per light is uh, more uh, 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 yeah fun per light there's no metal side of course it is uh, very dark type and most dark type is a per light or maybe coarse per light this is diagram simply give the various transformation product which will be obtained at different cooling rates okay the end product 
uh, are usually mutton side or polite depending on the cooling media. It's not applicable for uh, for uh, by night. Okay. If you conduct um, normalizing, uh, normalizing or polarizing this process, you can use uh, a CCT diagram. So normalizing, what's the difference? The difference is it cool slightly faster. Okay. And underneath the most lower cooling rate. So it's end here, which is fine for light. What about full underneath? This is full underneath. Okay, the completion is uh, fall at this region. What region is this? This is cause for light. Or sometimes it is, uh, you can obtain for light, but not fine for light. If you want to obtain fine for light, you need to use normalizing process. The curve like this is a very short time. Transformation complete at uh, the, the, the second about uh, uh, 10 until, um, not 10, about uh, 20 or uh, 50 uh, seconds, okay? So look at the time. The time is very important. All right. Uh, I think it's uh, 3.50. How many slides uh, more? We have there are another seven slides. Uh, I think we, we can stop now. We can continue next week on Sunday. Uh, any question before I end the class? Uh, because the learning element is uh, it's quite long to explain this one. Any question? No, no, no. Okay. If no question, I think I can stop here. Okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, see you again next week. And for those who